Good afternoon on this wonderful day in this great place that we're in. It is my pleasure to be here in behalf of our Mayor, Alan Joins, and of course your Councilman, Mr. McIntosh, Councilmember McIntosh, but in behalf of the other elected officials and of course county people of here, I see the wonderful County Commissioner Whitsner. always nice to see your elected officials. We do have with us our city manager, Mr. Lee Garrity and Mrs. Garrity. I saw Mr. Norby who heads our city county planning and of course Ms. McCullough and her staff, people here on this day. Now it's just a little too hot for me to talk too long. <laughs> the top of my head is burning and those without hair on the top, I know theirs is burning and I can afford to say that because my husband didn't have the hair on top of his head. So I know from experience. But I wanna say again, it's such a wonderful day. And when I saw the young folks coming in, I really felt good because this is our lifeline. So I've done what I need to do. That is to welcome you, greet you, and tell you that we are grateful to our citizens for being participants to help us to work together in our city and county. So at this time, I'm pleased and delighted to introduce and present to some your your council person, Councilmember McIntosh. Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming out on this beautiful day. Um, as many of you, if you know me, you probably know that uh, my roots go back very far into historic preservation uh, and, and the appreciation of history of our community. I do think as we go forward, Winston-Salem and Forsyth County, uh, as we face competitive pressures for, when, for trying to bring jobs here and bring people here, one of the things that we have that other communities can't duplicate is this long, deep history. And we have more historic properties and landscapes at our disposal than any other community in the state of North Carolina. So I love Charlotte, but Charlotte can't do what we do. They can't point back 250 years to a community like this. They can't point back to the mid-1700s to, to an old Salem. So I think those are things that serve us well. And I think the community has spent a lot of time and effort in, re in retaining as much of that fabric as we possibly can. I think that's important. Uh, but it takes effort and it takes involvement from, from the community like we, we have here today. So thank you, and I think it serves us well going forward if we can continue to have that that support for the preservation community. Um, at this time, I would like to introduce the Reagan JV cheerleaders. I'm not sure what they're going to do, but I'm sure they're going to be entertaining. Thank you very much. I do also want to recognize um, Mr. Aubrey Stimson, who has allowed us to use the, the uh, facility here today. And I know that he's involved in a lot of construction business in town. We just really appreciate, appreciate his support in allowing us to use the, the spot. Uh, now I'd like to introduce Chad Gadbury, who is with the Historic Resources Commission here in town, or in the city and county. And uh, he would like to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, my name is Chad Gadbury. As Jeff mentioned, uh, I'm a commissioner on the Forsyth, Forsyth County Historic Resources Commission. And on behalf of the commission, uh, I'd like to welcome you to this marker unveiling. And I certainly thank you for coming. Uh, the Historic Marker Program started over 10 years ago, and to date we have placed close to 40 markers throughout this community. The Poftown Historic Marker brings us, brings to, helps bring to awareness to a small farming community that helps to make Forsyth County a unique place. Dating back to mid to late 1800s, this community grew from the humble beginnings of the Peter Paul Farm to a thriving, commu thriving community with churches, a post office, and the Labor Exchange School. Historic markers help the community not to overlook the people who have come before us and fought for a better life for us. These markers 
help mark a spot in history that should not be forgotten. Now I'd like to introduce former resident Mike Mabe, who has deep connections to the area and to the community, and will begin the remarks portion of this program. Mike. Thank you, Chad. And thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Vivian Burke, for being here. I just wanted to share with you some remarks and feelings that I have about this marker and what it means to me. I'm a native of this zip code, and my parents were born in 1919 and 1924 here and lived their life in this area. In fact, my mother back here, 91 years old, is here today, born in 1924. And before that, my grandparents, 1878, Lineback was born here. Her husband in 1900 came from Stokes County. George Robert Mabe lived the rest of his life in this landscape behind me, in this area known as Poff Town. So, 90% of my life has been living here in this area. So this marker represents a recognition and a respect that the county feels that is deserving for us to warrant the founding name that this area is called. Now, if you live in the zip code and you fill out that address or you talk on the telephone with someone telling them where you live, you have to educate them how to pronounce it and how to spell it. Now, Mr. Poff would have done us a great favor if he would have had the vision and the initiative to drop that first F and change that spelling. But it didn't happen, so we deal with it. But I'm very proud of the roots that are deep in my life here. I've always been proud of this area and the neighbors and the churches and the stores and now a building that the county planted up the road 10 years ago and designated it to be a high school. Very proud of that. And I wanna thank someone who made this possible. Us being here in that marker was the vision of one individual. It wasn't me. But Tommy Smith, living here on Skylark Drive. Where is Tommy? Raise your hand. Right here is the individual who had a vision for a marker, who did the research, who filled out the applications, who went to the board. He did not get accepted. He didn't give up. He went back again the next year after he garnered some support. He is the one who created the Village of Poff Town website that enables us to communicate and stay connected. And I have never met face to face Tommy until today, but we have emailed, we have texted, and we have been on the social media working together to bring this about. Now that's a teaching moment that I want to stress to these Reagan students here. All it takes is one person with an idea, with a dream, and with the initiative to do some work, garner support, sell your idea, and something like this can pass through the levels of government to become a reality. So that's the message that I want to convey to these young teenagers 
that I love and am so proud of when I see you at the school. So that's my message and that is my thanks and I appreciate everything that happened to bring this about. And now I want to have follow me, Lewis Sapp, another resident of this neighborhood who has remarks. So Lewis. Thank you, Mike, I really appreciate it. I've been out today watching these uh, vintage fighter planes fly over Pofftown all morning and I'm reminded of how lucky we are to live in this great nation. How lucky we are to live in a community like Pofftown and how lucky I am to be a, a resident of Pofftown. So I'm thankful for the, all the people that served in the armed forces, my neighbors, some that I knew that have passed on, like Johnny Maynard that served in Patton's 4th Brigade, told me a lot of stories before he passed on. There's a lot of people in this community that have made this community great and I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more come along that will make it even greater. I was telling Mike earlier that 10 years from now, in fact, you hear the planes now. In fact, 10 years from now, maybe we do another sign at the other end of the trans at Old Rich McGrill. Because Old, Old Rich McGrill is where all the business is conducted and all the community efforts are put together and that's what's making Puff Town great. So we don't need to forget the other end of the trans We built a house out here in 1985. My mom and dad bought land from John Long in the, in the 60s. I was fortunate enough to be able to build a house on it with, with my wife Katrina. We've raised two girls, one of which Taylor was in the first gr uh, graduating class at Reagan High School, which I'm very proud of. Back then, this little farming community was a sleepy little community. There was no traffic lights. There was no traffic. You never had to wait in line at the post office. You had Grandview Food Market where you could buy an axe handle, you could buy groceries, you could buy anything you wanted. That's not there now. But if you look around today, everything's, everything's good. And, and, the, and the people that are in this community now that have just moved in will make it greater. You know, I, I had never been up this road here the other day. Mike sent me a map to where this function was taking place and I've looked all over. I had no clue it was here until I drove up this, uh, this afternoon. So I'm very proud to be a part of this community. I look back here. Ooh, that was good. I look back here at Mr. Woosley. He was a teacher at Old Richmond, uh, uh, school elementary school when my girls were going there and I remind, I'm reminded of the history when I moved into this area I was fortunate enough my dad's family which is a sap family they came from the village of Renola my granddad worked for old man Reynolds and so all of my brother my dad's brothers and sisters were born on the Renola estate well my dad's youngest sister dated Maxie Dab's son Don Dab in high school so when I moved out in this community, they found out I, I was out here, so the community accepted me. Back then, there were a lot of people running cattle, a lot of corn, a lot of soybeans, like it is now, but I kind of fell in with some, some of them, and they started teaching me all the history, where the wagon roads were, where all the old trails were, everything you could think about. And I had horses and cattle at Walter Dabb's place on Balsam Road. And seeing the uniform reminded me that Walter used to tell me about the Revolutionary War grave sites of soldiers that were back actually there's three or four uh, buried behind one of, the, one of the residential houses then there's some more supposedly unfound on, on the ridge right behind Walter's place so there's a lot of history out here the old dab place it was a it was a rendezvous point for Indians and trappers in the 1700s and you can actually see where the old mill was where they had the uh, dam on the creek there Beshavia Creek built up and where they ran the canals to run the, the, the power to power the uh, tannery. So there's a lot of history here that I learned about. And I want to tell you one thing. I'm not afraid of anything, trust me. But I used to team rope a lot and I had a lot of horses and I kept them down at Walter's place. And one night I came in, it was late. It was about two o'clock in the morning. I parked the horse trailer on the road and I unloaded all the horses and I let them, I was gonna lead them down to the, to the shed and feed them in a bucket. I always fed them after every event. And if you've ever been to Walter's place or seen it on Boston Road, there's an old house there that was built in the 1700s. For some reason that night, there was, there was no moon, there were no stars, and it was pitch black. As I led those three horses by that house, they started getting a little bit jittery and kind of moving around, which, which, which was unusual. And actually, the hair on the back of my neck started standing up. 
And I thought, what in the world is going on? And the whole time I was down there, I felt the same feeling. And all I could think about was those 600-year-old oak trees under the house where there, who knows who sat there and what was talked about. And the Indians and the trappers and the grave, the grave sites around there. As I came back out, I picked my step up. I didn't even look at the house. I just dropped my head and headed to the truck. Well, several months later, Don, um, sorry, David, David Doss, I think it is, uh, a local artist, did a, a print because, called Along Beshavia Creek, and it was, a, it was a print of the old house. And I got looking at it, and I know he didn't do it on purpose, but if you'll ever look at that print in that window on the front of the house, it looks like the outline of somebody standing there looking out. So to this day, I still believe there's people down at Walter's Place and all along these, these backwoods and all through here. So that's my story of Pofftown. I love this area. I've always thought maybe I'd like to live somewhere else. I'd love to go to Wyoming or Montana and live. I'd, look, I'd like to go somewhere, but I cannot think of a place I'd rather be than this community. Reagan High School, personally, I do not think would be what it is today without the people the first two years that school was here stepped up to the plate and they did a tremendous amount of work. They raised a tremendous amount of money, put blood, sweat, and tears in that school, and it is what it is today. Stan Elrod had a hard time filling that school up when he came, but look at it today and look at, look at what it is. This community now is a thriving community. Everybody wants to be in Poff Town, and I'm proud to be a part of it. So with that, I'm glad you're here. I, I hope that you uh, cherish this area and you learn more about it. And uh, if you do live here, take, take pride in being a, in, in a part of it. Thank you very much. If there is anybody else who would like to share um, uh, or contribute in any way to um, this um, unveiling, you're welcome to come up to the microphone and give your, uh, give your remarks. Good afternoon. Elected officials, dedication committee, and fellow Pofftown residents. I am Dinah Myers from Pofftown Christian Church, and we bring you greetings from Pofftown Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, the first Christian church established in the Peter Poff Senior Settlement in 1865. Next Sunday, September the 27th, 2015, we will celebrate 150 years of worship in this community and would like to present to you a collection of items to commemorate this historical event. Included are our sesquicentennial ornament and our 150th anniversary edition of the Pofftown Church Christian Cookbook, plus a copy of The Star in Wachovia by Dr. Charles C. Ware, church historian. A great deal of information about the early settlement in Pofftown is contained in this historical account of our church. There are presently 18 members of our church who are direct descendants of Peter Poff Sr. As part of our celebration, many documents, books, and photos from the 1800s through today will be on display next Sunday, September the 27th, before and after our 1030 worship service. Thank you for allowing us to be part of this special event. We are so grateful for your presentation and I will make sure, and I'm sure the council member, I'm going to hand it to him, and on Monday at our council meeting, we will acknowledge this kindness. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to uh, make remarks? I'll come on up. Well, I hate to say that I'm the oldest member, but I guess I am. <laughs> My mom lived to be 105, and we lived right up the street. 
and I'm 93, but I don't usually tell anyone that. <laughs> but like I was telling someone, I remember being a little girl and swiping eggs out from under the chickens and coming down to Uncle John's store and I could get candy and ice cream, whatever I wanted. <laughs> but um, I haven't lived here in quite a long while, but I did live a year in Uncle John's home, the White House, while our house was being built in Ardmore. And I don't come back very often, so everything's new to me too. And that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, if there aren't any other remarks, I think we should uh, get started with this unveiling. So, um, any elected officials and anybody that has uh, had anything to do with, with the marker itself, you're welcome to come up and help us unveil it. 